It is the final day of the Lopes Up Classic and the final game of this tournament here between the Grand Canyon University Lopes and the Baylor Bears. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome inside the beautiful GCU Softball Stadium for today's final action of the Lopes Up Classic. I am Kyle Borg bringing you all of the play-by-play -play from today's final game. The Baylor Bears enter this one at 13-4, coming off an 8-1 victory over the Northern Illinois Huskies. The Lopes enter this one at 9-12 after getting beat by the Baylor Bears 12-1 yesterday and the Northern Illinois Huskies 5-2. So let's see how the Baylor Bears line up in this final matchup of the weekend between these two sides. They will start with the center fielder, number 25, Nikki Dawson. Batting second is the designated hitter, Lou Gilbert. At first and batting third is Goose McGlawn. In the cleanup spots, the pitcher, Aliyah Binford. The 5-6-7 hitters are the second baseman, number four, Emily Hot. The right fielder, Madison Kettler. And the third baseman, Taylor Ellis. And rounding out the order at 8-9 is the catcher, Sidney Koyasos. And in the ninth spot is the left fielder, number 23, Alyssa Avalos. And playing shortstop but not batting today is number 18, Campbell Selman. So the Lopes enter this one on a three-game losing streak, and we'll see how they can snap that losing streak against a very solid Baylor Bears team with the Sanderson Ford three keys to the game. The first key for tonight's matchup is help her out. They got to help out Ryan Denhart on or in the circle. Lopes offense has to get going and score some runs to take the pressure off of Denhart and this defense. Second key, no mistakes. The Lopes have had a few costly errors over the last couple of games that they have played that have ended up costing them runs and ultimately costing them the game. So cutting down on the untimely errors will go a long way for this Lopes defense. And third and finally, don't get stuck. The Lopes have stranded many runners on base over the last two games that they have played, and those could have leaded to some big runs and some big innings as the Lopes are going to look to tack on some runs today and take down a very solid Big 12 opponent in the Baylor Bears who are making their first trip out to Phoenix this weekend. The Lopes are 0-4 all-time against this Baylor Bears team. So they're looking to get their first ever win against the Bears. The Bears are looking to continue their three-game winning streak and make it four, while the Lopes looking to end a three-game losing streak and get Coach Ann Pearson her 500th career victory as a head coach at GCU. It would also be the program's 500th win here since the program's inception at GCU. The Lopes will start defensively. We'll bounce around the infield for the Lopes first. The Lopes will catch with Isabella Gerke at first. Will be Taylor Olson today. At second is Savannah Torville. In the hole at short is Anjoli Aguilar Bocage. And at third is Araceli Pesquiera. Outfield from left to right is Gianna Nicoletti, Kristen Fifield, and Tabitha Dyer in the circle. This afternoon for the final game of the Lopes Up Classic will be the Lopes ace, number 23, Ryan Denhart, the senior pitcher and California native. On the season, Ryan Denhart, this will be her 10th start of the year. She is 5-3 and three overall this season. She's got four complete games. She's thrown 49 and two-thirds of an inning. Pitched. She's given up 56 hits, 31 runs. Just 24 of those runs have been earned. She's walked 14 and struck out 24. Opponents are batting 281 against the Lopes ace, Ryan Denhart, while she also has a 3.38 ERA. So yesterday in a 12 to 1. Win for the Baylor Bears. The Bears picked up 11 hits on those 12 runs, but it was the nine-run fourth inning that the Bears sent 14 batters to the plate to really put that game out of reach from the Lopes. It was a 2-0 Bears lead after two, but after the third, the Lopes cut into the lead, and it was just 2-1. to one. Then the Bears came out and scored those nine runs, also got one in the top of the fifth before shutting down the Lopes in the bottom of that inning. The Lopes just six hits to go along with three errors 
as well. Well, as the coaches meet at home plate with the umpires to go over the rules in the lineups, we'll step aside, take one final break before the final game of the Lopes Up Classic here at Grand Canyon University. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash myoffer. So as the coaches walk away from home plate. We will get set as the Lopes defense will get ready. We already talked about how they'll line up defensively. Let's see how they'll go offensively when we get to the bottom of the first with your Talking Stick Resort starting lineup for the Grand King University Lopes. They'll start with number 24, Gianna Nicoletti, who will lead off. Number 18, Tabitha Dyer will bat second. The designated hitter, Lily Bishop, will bat third. In the cleanup spot will be number 20, Kristen Fifield, batting fifth, playing second base today is 26, Savannah Torville. In the hole at short Short and batting sixth for the Lopes will be number three, Anjolie aguilar Bocage, And rounding out the order, seven, eight, and nine, the first baseman, number eight, Taylor Olson. The catcher, number seven, Isabella Gerke. And the third baseman, number 10, Araceli Pesquiera. And we already talked about it a little bit, but in the circle for the Lopes will be number 23, the senior pitcher, Ryan Denhart. The Lopes are... In the middle of a 20-game homestand, this will be game number 13 of that homestand. They'll have one more non-conference tournament when they will host the GCU Invitational, and they'll take on Idaho State and Southern Utah as part of that tournament. That's next weekend, and then the following weekend, they'll start conference play as they will host the Utah Valley Wolverines, and that will wrap up their homestand before they hit the road to start the month of April. Well, and as we get set, the Lopes defense takes the field. Weather pretty much the same as it is, was yesterday. Overcast with some clouds. Wind blowing looks like out to about right center field or so. Usually very sunny this time of year here in the Valley of the Sun this weekend. A little bit colder as well. So if you're coming out to the GCU softball stadium, bring a jacket, maybe a hat and some gloves. It's cold and windy. You'll want to stay bundled up. But if you're at home, we thank you for joining us. If you're just now tuning in, we're getting ready to start this one between the Bears of Baylor and the Lopes of GCU. I'm Kyle Borg. I'll be bringing you the play-by-play -play for this afternoon's final game of the second-to-last non-conference tournament of the season for GCU. They'll start whack play in two weeks here at home, and the Utah Valley Wolverines will pay them a visit. Lopes two-time regular season WAC champions in 2014-2017. They're going to look to possibly win the regular season and even better win a WAC tournament title in advance to the NCAA softball tournament for the first time in their Division I history. Well, Den Hart's warmed up and we are ready to go here with the leadoff batter for the Baylor Bears. It'll be the center fielder number 25, Nikki Dawson. First pitch from Denhart in at 135 local time, and it will be up high for ball one to the leadoff batter for the Baylor Bears. And we are underway here in this final game of the Lopes Up Classic. Dawson right at Angelie Aguilar-Bocage. 
Olsen can't pick it out of the dirt. Dawson's going to take a turn, and she will wind up at second base to lead off the game for the Baylor Bears. So Dawson is aboard at first, reaching by via the error from the shortstop Aguilar Bocage and then advanced on the throw. Gilbert's going to lay one down, throw on to first. That's Torville covering the bag. Pesquiera throwing on, and we got one away, but Dawson will slide on over into third base. So we talked about in the Sanderson Ford three keys to the game, no mistakes for the Lopes, and they start off with what could end up being a costly error and a run scored by the Baylor Bears offense after the first batter of the game. Denhart throws a strike to Goose McGlawn, the first baseman. She had a walk-off home run against Northern Illinois yesterday to open up the GCU, or the Lopes Classic, rather. McGlawn will take that one outside, and we're even at a ball and a strike. Denhart finds the corner for that one, and that's going to be in for strike number two. Malone now with 31 career home runs in her Baylor Bear career. Goose, one of the fifth-year seniors, taking that extra year of eligibility. After last year, Denhart's going to strike her out, swinging up high, two away. Take one more look at that. Den Hart striking out Goose McGlon. Got her to chase. That'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Aliyah Benford. Also doing the pitching today for the Baylor Bears. Benford batting wise this year. She's Coming into this game, batting an even 300 on the season. She'll send that one high and deep to left. Nicoletti at the wall. She's going to look up in the pitcher. Aliyah Binford tattoos one off of Denhart, and that one's still rolling into the Grove field, and it's 2-0 Baylor Bears. First pitch to the second baseman, Emily Hutt, is fouled off for a strike. Count is now even at a ball and a strike to Emily Hutt. Still in her freshman year, she also took that extra year of eligibility. So after last season, she comes back into this one as a second-year freshman. And now she's behind a ball and two strikes. So she's already got about half a college softball season under her belt coming into this season. One-two. Going to hit hot up high on the shoulder. That'll put one aboard with two out. So a, a two out, two run home run 
from the pitcher, Binford. And then Denhart hitting hot up high will bring up the right fielder, Madison Kettler. That one low for ball one, and the count's now even to Madison Kettler, one ball and one strike. Takes for strike two. Kettler now. It's a one-two count on her. One hit with two runs already in this game for the Baylor Bears offense. One-two, right back at Denhart. She will throw on Olsen. And that will end the inning. As you take a look at that home run from Aliyah Binford, it's a 2-0 Baylor Bear lead going to the home half of the first inning right here on GCU-TV. When I think back on graduation day, it's such a special moment. Walking across the stage, hearing your name called. I think I would really regret not walking. I think being able to finish out a long college experience with an awesome moment like graduation is really special. If I hadn't decided to walk that day, I think I'd regret not having that sense of closure and accomplishment for that huge chapter in my life. My name's Noah and I graduated in 2015. My name is Lauren and I graduated in 2016. Herf Jones, by your side. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Yeah. It's like right behind the thing. Oh. Back for inning number one, the bottom half of this inning as the starter for the Baylor Bears, number 41, Aliyah Binford, who's 2-1 and one on the season. Making her second start. She's got a 4.08 ERA. One complete game, one shutout, 17 two-thirds innings pitched, 14 hits, giving up nine runs. Eight of them earned. Eight walks, 13 strikeouts. Opponents are batting 215 against Aliyah Binford. The Lopes leadoff batter is Gianna Nicoletti. She takes the first pitch fouled off and backwards for strike number one. Nicoletti will take inside for a ball. Two balls and a strike now to the Lopes leadoff batter, Nicoletti. Walked 13 times coming into this one on the year. Ted likes to go deep into counts in this leadoff spot. Infield a little bit in on Nicoletti. She fouled that one off, and it's two balls and two strikes. Gianna tends to look to slap one to the opposite way and get aboard via her speed. Already has a couple infield singles on this tournament. Also the two twos in the dirt. Three balls and two strikes. Gianna's also the now the single season all time leader in stolen bases in a single year with fifteen. The previous record was fourteen. And she broke that yesterday with a stolen base. 
3-2, Nicoletti slapped the other way. Short. Stops throw. That's Selman's. Her throw pull. McGlawn off the bag. And Nicoletti is going to be aboard to lead it off for GCU. Might have been safe anyway. It's going to be an infield single for Nicoletti. Brings up the Lopes right fielder, Tabitha Dyer. Squares to bunt, can't lay one down, and she offered at it for a strike. Ten hits and three RBIs on the year. Tabitha batting 3.23, entering today. Oh, one's taken way up high. It's a ball and a strike. Yesterday against this Bears uh, defense, Dyer was 0 for 3. Nicoletti was 2 for 3. She was left on base three times. Lopes looking to fix that today. It was a hit and run situation, but it's fouled off by Dyer. One ball, two strikes as you saw Nicoletti take off for second on the pitch. Lopes looking to cut into the already 2-0 Baylor Bear lead. Off speed pitch. Fouled off by Dyer. A pretty full socially distant GCU softball stadium today. Dyer fouls it off again, stays alive, and the count will remain at a ball and two strikes. They're going to say Nicoletti left first base a little too early on the stolen base attempt, so Nicoletti will be out. And it's still one and two for Tabitha Dyer now with nobody aboard for the Lopes. One, two's in the dirt. Dyer still out at it now, two balls and two strikes. Really working deep into the count here. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Dyer fouls it off into the screen directly behind, and the count remains the same still. Long at bat for Tabitha. Dyer fouls that off into the Leg of the catcher off the shin guard, kept it in front, but couldn't hang on to it. And the count's still two balls and two strikes with one away in the bottom of the first. Dyer through the left side, diving play, but it's going to be an infield single anyway. But Selman was there to keep it in the infield. And Dyer's aboard. That brings up the designated player for the Lopes. Number 27, Lily Bishop. Lopes have had both runners on so far, but Nicoletti was called out, leaving the base too early, and now Lopes just with one aboard and one away for Bishop, who takes the first pitch for a ball. Selman's already been... Picked on a little bit there at short twice in this inning already. Both balls have been hit to her. Had the throw that was too high to get the speedy Nicoletti to lead off the inning. And then had to dive to keep it in the infield, but couldn't make a play on Tabitha Dyer. So the senior, Lily Bishop, is in the box now. It's a 2-0 count. 
Binford off speed pitch in for a strike. It was a good off speed right down the middle. Got fooled a little bit was Lily Bishop. Two one. Bishop thought about going on that off speed and it's in for a strike anyway. Two balls and two strikes. Got an even count. Two straight off speed pitches to Lily Bishop. Two two Bishop right off of Hot's glove. They're only going to get Bishop at first. Advancing is Dyer to second. But now two away. The center fielder, number 20. Brings up Kristen Fifield. In for a strike to the Lope center fielder, Fife Field. Fife Field swings through that pitch, and now it's quickly no balls and two strikes to Kristen. Fifefield batting 306 on the season, has played and started in every game so far for the Lopes through the first 21. 0 2. Right back up the middle. That's going to get down. They're going to send Dyer. Play at the plate's going to be a little late on the relay, throwing an RBI single for Kristen Fifefield. Brings up Savannah Torville. One on and two away. It's a 2-1 Baylor Bear lead. Torville right back to Selman. Selman's throw over to McGlawn at first is in time. And that will end the inning. Not before the Lopes get one back. It's a 2-1 Visiting Baylor Bear lead going to the second inning. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the Cougars of L.A. are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, You'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Inning number two here at the on the campus of Grand Canyon University. At the take a look at the student union right there. Probably busy today on this Saturday afternoon, mid semester. But we got softball going on right next door. It's a 2-1 Baylor Bear lead. Den Hart will step in, and she will face the third baseman, Ellis. 7-8-9 due up for the Baylor Bears as Taylor Ellis will swing through that first pitch, and it's in for a strike. Taylor Ellis batting 279 this season. Grounded to Pesquiera at first over to Olsen. And now there's one away. Top of the second on this 2-1 lead. Sydney Coyasos, the catcher for the Baylor Bears, will step in her first at-bat today. Georgetown, Texas native and a freshman. 
doing the catching for Baylor. She'll take that outside for a ball. Coyasos on the season, just 167 batting average. Two hits and 12 at-bats. She has scored two runs, though. She'll ground that one. Denhart, tough play. Pesquiera over at Olsen is in time for out number two. Took a deflection off the glove of Ryan Denhart. And that will bring up the left fielder, number 23, Alyssa Avalos. She'll take up high, but hits the corner of the zone, says the home plate umpire for a strike. The Rancho Cucamonga native, Alyssa Avalos, is got three at-bats officially on this season, but no hits. She'll swing at that. Foul it off, and it's 0-2. Lenny got a piece of the home plate umpire, Willie Newman. Looks like we're ready to go. 0-2 with two outs now to the nine batter and the senior, Avalos. Denhart will deliver 0-2 outside. One ball and two strikes. Tried to get her to reach a little bit for that one on the outside part of the plate. But not close enough to freeze her looking. Check swing. Did she go? No, she didn't. That one was close, but the third base umpire says she did not go around. Anita Robinette at third base today. The first base umpire is Brett Higgins. So now it's two balls and two strikes. 2-2. Two -two. Way outside and in the dirt. So the count is full. We got three balls and two strikes with two outs. Bears looking to flip the lineup card over. Lopes looking to get back to the uh, batter's box where they plated one run and cut back into this Baylor barrel lead. Here's the payoff. Fouled off. We'll do it one more time. Three balls and two strikes. Bears hit a two-run home run off the bat of Aaliyah Binford, who's doing the pitching for Baylor today to give them a 2-0 lead. Fifield singled in a run, which was Tabitha Dyer, to cut into the lead back in the bottom half of the first inning, and that's where we stand at a 2-1 game. Here's the 3-2. Aguilar Bocage is not going to have her throw in time as Olsen had to stretch for it, but beating it out was Avalos, and that'll flip the card over, an infield single, single for Alyssa. Second hit given up by Denhart today. Bring up Nikki Dawson, fielder, Nikki Dawson, who reached via the error on Aguilar Bocage in the first, came around to score on the home run. First pitch to Dawson is a ball, just like in the last at-bat. She is 0 for 1 today. Now it's two balls and no strikes to Nikki Dawson, who is the all-time leader in career triples for Baylor. Picked up her 10th one to lead everybody back on March 7th, but she'll ground out to Taylor Olson for out number three. So that'll do it for the top half of the second. The bottom half of the second will bring... The Lopes to bat down by a run right here on GCU TV.
Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing GIFs to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions GIF Collection. Now I'm so happy. <sighs> Inning number two, the bottom half of it, will bring the Lopes to bat with the six, seven, and eight hitters. It'll be Angeli Aguilar, Bocage, Taylor Olson, and Isabella Gurky. We'll start with the shortstop and the freshman, Aguilar Bocage, will step in. Her first at bat of the afternoon. And she'll send a slow roller back to the pitcher on the first pitch. And Binford will retire Aguilar Bocage with the throw on to McGlawn at first. first That'll bring up the first baseman, Taylor Olson. Olsen making just her third start on the season. She's batting an even 200. One hit and five at-bats for her. She'll take for a strike to start off her at-bat. Oh, one. Good pick at third from Ellis over to McGlon to retire Olsen. And now the catcher, Isabella Gurky, will step up and step into the box with two away here in the bottom of the second. Binford sends some heat, but it's high and wide for a ball. Araceli Pesquiera stands in the on-deck circle for the Lopes, see if she can get a chance to bat. She's batting in the nine hole for GCU today. That one, same pitch, same spot outside. It's now two balls and no strikes to the Lopes catcher. Two oh big swing from Gurky. Couldn't connect, and now it's two balls and a strike. Gurky batting even two hundred on the season, three hits and fifteen at bats. She'll watch it low and outside for ball three. And now she's way ahead in the count, three balls and a strike. See what she can do here and what Binford will come at her with. Also does have four RBIs. She'll watch and she'll walk. First walk of the season for Gerke. And the first of the day for Binford. And that does bring up Pesquiera playing third for GCU today. She'll take inside. 1-0 is the count runner on first for the Lopes. The go-ahead run would be at home plate right now with Pesquiera. Tying runs at first. Down 2-1 are the Lopes. 1-0. Ground ball right back at Binford for the second time in the inning. And she will end it. So the Lopes get four batters to the plate. Can't move anybody over. And that will end the second inning. Still a 2-1 to one Baylor Bear lead. The third inning of the Lopes Up Classic coming at you on the other side of this break. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union.
I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. Inning number three of a scheduled seven-inning contest between the Baylor Bears and the Lopes of Grand Canyon is a two-to-one bear lead as the designated hitter Lou Gilbert will check back in for her second plate appearance of the afternoon. She had a sack bunt to move Dawson over to third back in the first. She'll lead us off. Denhart will deliver. And it's going to be a sh ball on the outside. Thought it might have been just in there for a strike, but Willie Newman has other plans. We'll show bunt and pull back. 1-0. That's in for a strike on the corner. One one. Really staying on that outside part of the play. It looked like it might have been the same spot too, but two balls and a strike will go the count on the designated hitter today, Lou Gilbert. Played the field yesterday against the Lopes. Lou was one for one with a run scored and a walk, but she'll lay one down and Torville's foot came off the bag. And Gilbert is away is aboard. Might have had her, but Torville had to adjust to come get that. So a single on the bunt. Third hit of the day for the Bears. Brings up Goose McGlon, who struck out in her first at bat. One zero. McGlon sends that one into center. Fife Field ranging over makes the grab, and there's one away. That'll bring up the home run hitter, Aaliyah Binford. She got all of it. So she hit a home run with two outs and now with one out here and a runner on, see what she can do. She'll send one the opposite direction. Dyer comes over into foul territory, makes the grab for out number two. And that'll bring up Emily Hot. Hot was hit by a pitch her first time up, and she'll take that one for a ball. one Ella down in the dirt for ball two. Two zero. That clips the corner for a strike. So Denhart gets one back. Two balls and a strike with two down. Here in the top half of the third, sun starting to peek through the clouds a little bit. 
Started with an overcast day. Now the sun's coming out. Same spot in for a strike in the counts. Even two balls and two strikes. Much to the chagrin of the low, of the Baylor batter. Hot. Two two. Just gonna miss, and the count is now full. Denhart really likes the outside part of the plate here in the third. Three two. Taking the opposite direction, but well into foul territory, so the count will remain full. And Hot will remain in the batter's box and will do it again. Both sides with three hits. The difference is a Baylor Bear home run to put them up two to one in the first. All runs that were scored in this one up to this point came in that first inning of play. Both sides have left two aboard. Payoff pitch again, Denhart. Fouled away again into the left field side and out of play into that Lopes bullpen area. Lou Gilbert still standing on first base after the infield bunt single. Three two, Denhart walks her. So Hot was hit by a pitch in the first, and she'll walk here in the third. Now there's a runner in scoring position. That's Gilbert now at second after the walk. And that'll bring up Madison Kettler, the senior. First pitch to Madison's a ball. Yesterday against the Lopes, Kettler went two for two with a run scored. So she's proven to be dangerous here against the Lopes. 1-0, pulls back the bunt again. For good reason, that one was well inside, tailing in, almost got a piece of her. Now the pitching coach wants to come out and have a talk with Ryan Denhart. 2-0 -oh with two outs and two on here in the third. Lopes trying to keep this at a one-run disadvantage for the time being. And it looks like we're ready to go again. So now 2-0, two outs, two on, second and first for the low, or for Baylor, excuse me. Hot at first, Gilbert at second. A 2-1 Bear lead. 2-0. That's going to get the zone for a strike. Denhart trying to work her way back into this count. Kettler pulls that one well foul into the Baylor Bear bullpen area, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes now. So Denhart a strike away from getting out of this inning without giving anything up. That could end up going a long way for the Lopes. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And that one, Aguilar Bocage thought about going to third, but nobody was there as Pesquiera made an initial play on the ball. And now the bases are loaded. So another infield single, that one for Madison Kettler. And brings back up Taylor Ellis, who led off the second with a ground out to Pesquiera.
1-0. Outside. That finds the zone. Two balls and a strike now to the third baseman, Ellis. Baylor's got the bases loaded. Kettler at first, hot at second, Gilbert at third. 2-1. Right at Aguilar Bocage. This time she'll fire across the diamond. Olsen can't grab it and hang on as it was a little high, and that's going to end up plating two bare runs. Gilbert scores, Hot scores. Take another look. So more two out runs for Baylor. All four Baylor Bear runs have come with two away in the first and the third inning, respectively. Sydney Collazos, the catcher, will step up. She grounded out to Pesquera back in the second as well, and there's a first pitch strike from Ryan Denhart. So Collazos 0 for 1 on the day. She went one for one against the Lopes yesterday in a pinch hit effort. Oh, one's in the dirt. One one's fouled away. Baylor on a three game win streak entering this one. Throw down, possibly got the runner in a rundown, and now they'll throw to home and Kettler's going to be safe. Still a 1-2 count to Collazos. Ellis still on first. Ring him up looking. Denhart gets Koyasos and gets out of the inning, but not before three Bears cross the plate, and it's a 5-1 Bear lead. The bottom of the third inning is coming at you on the other side of this break. Is it possible to cook up the barbecue bacon burger at home? Well, that depends. Does your home have fresh chopped onions, pickles, Smoked cheddar, Monterey Jack, bacon, tangy barbecue sauce, and orange and white stripes with the word Whataburger emblazoned on the front of it? If so, then absolutely. Good thing there's the limited time barbecue bacon burger at Whataburger. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. 
A 5-1 Baylor Bear lead going to the home half of the third inning in the final game of the Lopes Up Classic. The Lopes will send Gianna Nicoletti, Tabitha Dyer, and Lily Bishop to the plate at a minimum. Those will be the one, two, and three hitters for the Lopes as they have turned over the lineup here to start the third inning. Still out there is Aaliyah Binford. Was that a good day in the circle and a good day at the plate? She started the Bears scoring. Nicoletti singled to lead us off in the first, in the bottom half of that first inning, and then was called out running to second, saying that she left too early. So now Hot's in at the circle. Nicoletti takes for a ball. Throw over, it's high and wide. Nicoletti's going to wind up at second base. How about the first Baylor Bear error of the day? Selman couldn't get that one over. Dyer fouls it off. So now the Lopes have a runner in scoring position. Dyer is the lone Lopes run. She's at the plate right now. She is one for one with a single. Then came a, a round to score on the Fife Field single. She'll lay one down. That's going to advance Nicoletti, and Binford will throw over and retire Dyer for out number one, but now Nicoletti's just 60 feet from scoring. Brings up Lily Bishop. Grounded out to second base. And her only at bat so far today. So she is 0 for 1. one zero. In for a strike. One ball and a strike. One down. See if Bishop can bring around Nicoletti. Get the Lopes back within three. Down by four right now. There's an off-speed pitch that fools Bishop. She's out in front of it. And it's one-two. So on deck and most likely coming up in this inning, Kristen Fifield, who has the RBI single today. She'll await the outcome of this at-bat. Bishop, with a good eye, takes it outside. Two balls and two strikes now. Two-two. Bishop gets one down, and Nicoletti's going to score. An RBI single for Lily Bishop. Bellavia will come in to pinch run for Lily Bishop at first. And that brings up Kristen Fifield. She had the RBI single to score Dyer back in the first. See what she can do with one down here in the bottom of the third. Throw over. Bellavia's back in time.
1 0 to Fife Field. Fouled off. It's one ball and a strike. One one. Five field slow roller foul. Picked up by McGlawn. In foul territory, it'll go one two. So after this Lopes Up Classic will wrap up today. Baylor is off tomorrow morning to take on Arizona State for the second time this weekend. Lost to Arizona State 7 4 back on Thursday. Lopes will see Arizona State later. Fifield pops that one up. It'll get out of play, though. It's one ball and two strikes. Still with one away. Bellavia now on first for Lily Bishop, who singled in a run. 5-2, Bear lead. Baylor receiving votes coming in to this week. They've been in and out of the top 25 all season long. Enter today 13 and 4. 1 and 2 outside. Kristen 0 for 3 yesterday. The strikeout and was left on base a couple of times. Five field. Slow one to hot. Throw over is way high. <laughs> First base coach for the Lopes had to get out of the way. So only one instead of two for the Baylor Bears. Torville takes for a strike. She is 0 for 1. She grounded to short. And Selman, who is in playing shortstop for Baylor, back in the second or in the first inning to end the first. Do up again. Two outs. Runner on. Off speed pitch in for a strike. Oh two. Popped up, and Selman ranges over to make the grab and retire the side. Lopes get one back, but they're still down 5-2 as we go to the fourth inning. You're watching GCU Softball on GCU TV. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, You've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. GCU fans, if you haven't done so already, it is time to download the Lope Nation app. Watch GCU sporting events, home sporting events directly from your app. Receive personalized news and score updates for all your favorite Lopes teams. Follow the Lopes closer than ever before with scores, schedule stories, and more. And even more perks will be coming soon. Search GCU Athletics in your phone's app store or download the GCU Athletics app now at gculopes.com slash app. So it'll be 9, 1, and 2 in the batting order for Baylor. So Avalos, Dawson, Gilbert. This is Avalos right now. She's 
she singled back in the second. And she'll go quickly down 0-2. O2 out past the glove over from Torville to Olsen just in time for out number one. Now flip the lineup card over again. Denhart almost got there initially, but Torville came over and made a quick flip over to Olsen just in time. So Nikki Dawson, who's 0 for 2. She reached on an error and came around to score in the first, then grounded out to the first baseman to end the second. And here she'll start off with a first pitch strike. First time she's taken a strike in an at-bat today. Back-to-back -back strikes now. Dawson just six strikeouts on the season. See if Den Hart can get her here. She'll poke one foul and stay alive. Fouled off again. Dawson, the all-time career leader in triples at Baylor with 11 now. She's picked one up here this week. Her 10th and the all-time leading 10th triple at when it was. She got it against Louisiana Tech on March the 7th. So she's now got four triples on the season after this weekend. Still 0-2 now for Dawson. She'll finally get one up high and take it for a ball. Nikki Dawson is also named to that all-tournament team down in Louisiana after a road trip last week where they saw the Bears going 5-0. and She was one of four Bears to be named to the all-tournament team at the Louisiana Tech Invitational, and here she'll have a 2-2 count now. Leading the team in batting average as well as Nikki Dawson. 2-2, flown in a right over Dyer's head to the wall. This could be another triple for Nikki Dawson. Oh, it's going to be an easy one, too. She's in there standing up. I think Dawson was thinking triple right out of the box. Her fifth on the season now. It is her fifth on the year, which I believe gives her 12 for her career. So that'll bring up Lou Gilbert with one down and a runner in scoring position. Gilbert takes... For a ball. So in games where Baylor scores five plus runs, they are four and two this season. However, they are 0-1 when they only hit one home run, which they have done. One and one is the count now for Lou Gilbert. Goose McGlawn stands on deck. She's already homered in this tournament. How about one from Lou? Looking up at the wall is Gianna Nicoletti. And another two-run home run for the Baylor Bears to make it 7-2. to two. So 
Second home run given up by Denhart in this one. Both have been to left field. Goose will foul one off. This is Lou Gilbert's first home run of the season. Count is now even at a ball and a strike. Just her second career home run. Her first came last year at Houston. Goose now down one and two. So just the second career home run for Lou Gilbert. First of her season gives the Bears a five-run lead here in the top of the fourth. Goose, who's batting 364 with 20 hits and 55 at bats. Well, now 21 hits on her season. Two, two with one out. Outside counts full. McGlawn struck out. In her first at-bat, she's 0 for 2 today as Aaliyah Binford stands on deck. She's already got a home run today as well. She started the scoring for Baylor. 3-2 is poked to Torville, who will make the grab. Goose struggling from the plate right now, but doesn't really seem to affect this Bears offense as it's a 7-2 Baylor lead. And here's Aaliyah Binford, who had that two-run home run back in the first. So 1 0 count now to Binford. That home run that Aaliyah hit back in the first was her sixth of her career. And right now she's got a 2 0 count with nobody on and two down. She'll take a big swing, but pop it up. Torville running over. She's going to call off Olsen. She'll make the grab. And that ends the inning. Not before a couple of Bears cross the plate on the two-run home run from Lou Gilbert. It's 7-2. Baylor Bears will go to the home half of the fourth. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Is it possible to cook up the barbecue bacon burger at home? Well, that depends. Does your home have fresh chopped onions, pickles, smoked cheddar, Monterey Jack, bacon, tangy barbecue sauce, and orange and white stripes with the word Whataburger emblazoned on the front of it? If so, then absolutely. Good thing there's the limited time barbecue bacon burger at Whataburger. Back, bottom of the fourth. It's a 7-2 Baylor Bear lead. If you're just joining us, the Bears Struck first on a two-run home run in the first. The Lopes got one back. Nobody scored in the second. Three Baylor runs in the third. The Lopes got one of those back, and it was 5-2 to two entering the top of the fourth. But another two-run home run from the Bears makes it 7-2 where we stand right now. Aguilar Bocage is now up for the Lopes. So Leah Benford still in the circle for Baylor. And Jolie grounded out to Benford back in her only appearance in the second. Of course, 
Aguilar Bocage is the younger sister of former Lopes standout Brianna Aguilar, or better known to Lopes fans as Bobo. Aguilar Bocage's mother also played so collegiate softball at The Ohio State University. Here's a 2-0 in for a strike. Off speed pitch, Aguilar Bocage wanted to go around on it, but holds off and it's in for a strike anyway. Two balls and two strikes. Two two, Aguilar Bocage over and off the glove of Ellis at third, and it's, it goes. It was in fair territory before being deflected foul, so it will be a hit for Aguilar Bocage to lead off the bottom of the fourth. The sixth lope hit of the day and brings up Taylor Olson. Grounded out to Ellis. Back in the second as well. She is 0 for 1. Quickly 2-0 to Taylor Olson. Three balls and no strikes to Taylor Olson. That's in for a strike. Now it's three balls and one strike. Fouls it off, and we're full. Three balls and two count and two strikes with nobody down and a runner on first for the Lopes. Here's the payoff from Aaliyah Benford. Fouled away again by Taylor Olson. Let's do it again. Three balls and two strikes. Binford here's the payoff. Right back. Let's see if they can turn two over to second for one. Over to first is in time. The one for three double play. The one for three double play. Binford. With a good turn to start it. Now there are two away. Nobody aboard for the Lopes for Isabella Gerke, who walked in her only at bat so far. Or should say plate appearance. This is her second plate appearance of the afternoon. Gerke doing the catching for GCU today. Tends to. Takes for a ball. Gerke intends to major in cybersecurity here at GCU while also playing softball. Four-year starter in high school was Isabella as well. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Fouled off. Here's a 1-2 now. Two down. Baylor scores three runs at any point. Between now and the end of the six, we'll end this one early if the Lopes can't get it back within eight. One, two. Gerke popped up over his hot. Hot makes the catch in shallow 
right field, and that will end the fourth. 7-2 lead, Baylor Bears coming to bat in the top of the fifth. This is GCU Softball on GCU TV. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. Get the best gear to show off your Lope pride. Go to lopesshops.gcu.edu to find everything GCU from the newest apparel to the coolest accessories. Use promo code GAMEDAY20 today only to get 20% off just for being a GCU TV viewer. Log on and get your gear today. That is Game Day 20 Use that promo code and get 20% off from the Lope Shop online. So we're ready here for inning number five between the Lopes and the Bears. And the Bears are up seven to two. Sydney Sahar is now in for the Lopes. And she will face the middle of the order. Emily Hot takes one out past the glove of Fifield. Nicoletti's there to cover, but it's going to be a stand-up double for Emily Hot. Five, six, and seven was due up. Now this is Smith, who's in the sixth spot for Baylor today. Smith is going to come in and hit for Kettler. Smith still looking for her first hit on the year. She did pinch run yesterday, ended up scoring a run against the Lopes. Smith sends a high fly ball to the left. That's going to be over Nicoletti's head. And how about that for your first hit of the year? It's a home run for Hannah Smith. And the lead is now 9-2 to two for the Bears. Taylor Ellis is now due up. That one popped up and flown out to center over the head of Dyer. 
And making the turn around second, can't corral it is Torville. And in to third is Taylor Ellis. The second triple of the day for the Bears offense. Still nobody down here in the top of the fifth. Brings up the catcher, Sidney Coyasos. Who is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out today. Struck out looking back in the third. 1 0 is fouled away. One one. Right at Olsen for out number one. Alyssa Avalos. Avalos is now up with one for two today. She singled back in the second, grounded out in the fourth. One down, runner on third. It's Ellis after the triple. Then the line out, and that brings up the nine batter. So Dawson standing on deck. She might get into this inning as well. Tripled back in the fourth, came around to score. Sydney started yesterday against the Baylor Bears. She went three innings. Give up five hits, six runs, all earned, walked four, struck out two, and hit a batter as well. With well, Sydney's stat line from yesterday. Here's a 2 0 from Sahar. Fouled away, gets a strike that time. Sydney on the season has a 5.56 ERA. She's 1 and 2 in the win loss column, and this will be her 10th appearance. Going 22 and two-thirds innings pitched, three hits, 23 runs, 18 earned, walk 10, struck out seven. Or struck out 13, excuse me. Opponents are batting 340 against Sidney Sahar. And it's a 3-1 count to Alyssa Avalos. Grounded right at Aguilar Bocas. She'll make sure the runner stays put at third and throw over Olsen for out number two. That turns the lineup card over again. Here's Nikki Dawson looking to drive in a run. Nikki Dawson one for three with a triple and a Pair of runs scored. In for a strike. Oh, one outside. So tripled in her last at bat and I think Dawson was thinking three straight off the bat. It did get over the head of Dyer, just a misread on her part, but off the bottom of the wall, and by the time the Lopes outfielders picked it up, Dawson was already rounding second base. It was an easy stand-up triple for her. 1-1, one, one, it's off speed and outside. Two balls and a strike for Nikki Dawson. Only walked five times this year, also only has six strikeouts, so she really likes to put the ball in play, and she does it well. Swung through, missed at that. Might have got a piece, but nonetheless, it's two balls and two strikes. Okay. 
Dawson leading the team in batting average at 386. Coming into this game, 2-2, two -two, ground ball. Over to Olsen, it is in time for out number three. So uh, another home run for Baylor gives the Bears a 9-2 lead. And we will go to the home half of the fifth inning after these messages. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer. A new pitcher for the Baylor Bears coming in for Aliyah Binford. It will be Sidney Holman Mansell, the junior from Belton, Texas, and the transfer from Abilene Christian. She'll step in to pitch. Benford's final line, four innings of work. Six hits, two runs, one earned, and a walk. Didn't strike any lopes out yet, so Araceli Pesquiera will step up here in the fifth to lead us off. Benford has moved over to short. So the defensive changes for Baylor. The new pitcher, Holman Mansell, is now in. Selman is out. Benford moves to short. McGlawn is also out at first. This is cross now. Number 12 will be playing first base. For Baylor, everybody else pretty much stays the same. Kettler is also out for Smith in right. Of course, Kettler has been out for a couple of innings now. So 0-2 oh, to Araceli Pesquiera. O oh, two is up high. Couldn't get her to chase. Foul that one off. Swung on, missed, and the tag's applied to complete the strikeout. And there's one away for the Lopes. Here's Gianna Nicoletti now. She's two for two today with a run score. A pair of singles for her.
takes pitch number one in for a strike. Slow roller over to Cross. Did she pick it out of the dirt in time? She did. That one was close. Ellis over to Cross. Cross scooped it out of the dirt. I don't know. That one was pretty close. And they'll bring up Tabitha Dyer with two down. Swings through and takes for strike one. No balls and one strike with two away to Tabitha Dyer. Fouls it off and now it's 0-2. Holman Mansell will come set. She will take a step back, wind, and deliver. 0-2, corner, got her looking. No thanks, I'm just looking. Tabitha Dyer strikes out. That ends. We'll go to the top of the sixth inning when we come back. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. At Raising Cane's, we know quality takes time, patience, and the best ingredients, which is why every chicken finger we serve is hand-battered and cooked to order just for you. We never take shortcuts. But that doesn't mean you can't. Introducing an even faster and easier way to order Cane's with our new app. Find your closest restaurant, customize your meal, pay and schedule pickup. So next time, take it easy and order with the Raising Cane's app. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. A new Lopes pitcher, it's gonna be number two, Lexi Coons. For the Lopes, on the season, this will be her seventh appearance. She's 0 for two in the win-loss column with a 5.25. ERA, 14 two-thirds inning pitched, 23 hits, 15 runs, 11 of them earned, four walks and four strikeouts on the season for Lexi. She will face the two, three, and four hitters for the Baylor Bears. Lou Gilbert, Cross, and Binford will be the hitters for Baylor. And Gilbert will take the first pitch for a strike, she homered back in the fourth inning. Take a swing at that. Nicoletti will make the play. Easy grab for her. Only had to take a couple of steps back. And that'll bring up Cross. Kendall Cross, number 12, will step in. Cross still looking for her first hit on the season as well. Also looking for her first official at bat. Oh, one one outside. Oh, 
One one. So Lily Bishop is in at first base now for Taylor Olson. For the Lopes, Olson will move to the DH spot. So her and Bishop just flip. Three balls and a strike to Kendall Cross. Sophomore from Texas. That one was close, but it'll be a ball and it'll walk Kendall Cross. Thought that one when I clipped the corner. So now one aboard for Aaliyah Binford, who also has homered on the day. She's now playing shortstop for the Bears. She's one for three with a pair of RBIs. She'll take for a ball. One one goes the count to Binford from Coons. Binford right back up the middle. And there'll be two aboard. Her second hit of the day. We'll have a pinch hitter. It'll be Katie Ellington, the freshman from Texas, will come in and pinch hit for Emily Hot. So Ellington steps in with one down. One ball, one strike goes to count. One ball, two strikes. There's the count to Ellington. Count goes even. Two balls and two strikes with one away. Got it on the corner for strike three. First strike out for Lexi. And that'll bring up Smith. For playing the right field right now. This is Hannah Smith. She homered back in the fifth.
One for Owen with that two-run blast. It's her first hit of the season. Low for a ball. So two down, it's a 1-1 one, one count. Here, top six. Outside, two balls and a strike. Two one. High and outside for ball three to Hannah Smith. It's three balls and one strike goes the count to the right fielder for the Baylor Bears. They have a seven run lead right now. Three one clips the corner on the inside, and the count will go full again. Three balls and two strikes now with two down. Lexi Coons one strike from getting out of this. There's two runners on for Baylor. The runner on second is Cross. On first is Binford. It's going to be a foul ball down the line. Didn't. Quite get over the plate or over the top of the third base before going foul. So we'll do the 3-2 again. Coon's got the signal. She'll wind fire the 3-2. Walked her. That's going to load him up for Baylor. Bases are loaded for Taylor Ellis with two outs. Ellis, who is one for three with a triple today. Pop that one up. And that will end the inning. Lopes get out of the bases loaded jam. And we'll go to the bottom of the six, down nine to two. time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Well, before we get to the bottom half of the six, let's take a look at the GCU upcoming schedule. 
Baseball currently in action right now over at the baseball stadium. It's their first game of a doubleheader. That second game scheduled to start at 5 o'clock. Women's basketball also plays in the WAC tournament final today. That game is also currently in action. That tipped off at about 3 o'clock. You can catch that on ESPN+. Plus. Lopes looking to punch their first ever ticket to the women's basketball tournament. Along with that, for the third straight season, the men's basketball team is in the WAC tournament final. That's on ESPNU tonight at 8 o'clock Arizona time. And guess who they're going to be taking on? Yeah, that's right. It's the New Mexico State Aggies for the third straight year as well. The Lopes men's team also looking to punch their first ever ticket and go to the dance tonight. Again, 8 o'clock ESPNU. Be sure to check both those championship games out. Bishop is up with an 0-2 count currently. She's one for two with a sin RBI single today. She's now at first for the Lopes. She'll swing through and get a piece of that. Maysell takes a long look in. Here's the 0-2. Got her looking. Two of the three lope strikeouts have been looking, including back-to-back -back now to end the fifth and to start the sixth. Brings up Kristen Fifield. She's one for two with an RBI single. That came all the way back in the first inning. Coons come set, should deliver the 2-2. Two -two. Fouled away again. So we'll stay with it. Thompson's still hanging in there. Anna Thompson bats 250 this year. Three hits and 12 at-bats. She's got five RBIs. A pair of strikeouts. No walks for her yet this year. So a hit by pitch will advance Thompson to first, moves Collazos to second. She got hit right in the rib cage. Nikki Dawson will come in and run for Hannah Thompson. She's back into this game now. Now batting for the Lady Bears, number 19, Marin Judish. Judish will step in and pinch hit for Lou Gilbert with one away and two on here in the top of the seventh. Judish has not taken an at-bat this year. She has no stats in the hitting category. First plate appearance this season. She'll see it for ball one. One ball, one strike now goes the count.
pitch in the dirt for ball two, and it's two balls and one strike now. Still one away. Pair of runners on for Baylor. They're up seven at nine to two. Now we're going to want to talk about it with Lexi. Lexi hasn't given up a run just yet on her day. One full inning of work. So now one, one at one and a third innings, two walks, two strikeouts, and a pair of hits given up for her. And it looks like we're set and ready to go again. Two one. Three balls, one strike now to Judas. That's in for a strike, and the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. Off of the glove of Aguilar Bocage. That will load the bases. Pinch runner for the Bears. Or Lou Gilbert's going to check back in. So Gilbert, or Gilbert will return after being hit for by Judish, and that'll bring up Kendall Cross, number 12. Walked left on third base back in the sixth. Fouled away. Lopes looking to get out of this inning without giving up any more runs. Already down by seven. A comeback will get increasingly harder with every run given up here. Ball and a strike is the count. In for a strike. One ball and two strikes. Swan and miss, tipped into the glove. First strike, number three. Third strike out of the game for Lexi Coons. That'll bring up Aaliyah Binford, who's now at short, started in the circle. When this game started for Baylor, she's two for four. Two RBIs, a run scored, a single, and a two-run home run. Flight out, first pitch. Fifield off the top of her glove. That's going to score Cayasos. Going to score Dawson. Here comes Gilbert. Is she in there? She is. Uh, bases clearing a three-run double for Benford.
Her third hit of the day. Go with five RBIs for her. It's 12 to 2. With two down. Ellie or Hot now steps back in. Pinch hit for in the last inning. Now she's back up to bat, and it's one and one. One one off of Torville, booted at second base. Everybody's gonna be safe. Brings back up Smith. Outside. Smith walked. Back in the sixth. Had a two-run home run back in the fifth. And she's one for one today with two RBIs and a run scored. Blown out, center field, Fife Field makes the grab and the inning is over, but not before Baylor uh, plates three. It's 12 to two. Bears, as we go to the bottom of the seventh, the Lopes gonna need a massive comeback and mount a rally. We'll see if they do it when we come back. When I think back on graduation day, it's such a special moment, walking across the stage, hearing your name called. I think I would really regret not walking. I think being able to finish out a long college experience with an awesome moment like graduation is really special. If I hadn't decided to walk that day, I think I'd regret not having that sense of closure and accomplishment for that huge chapter in my life. My name's Noah and I graduated in 2015. My name is Lauren and I graduated in 2016. Herf Jones, by your side. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. Back for the final half inning, possibly, of softball. It's 12-2, Baylor with a 10-run lead. Lopes going to need to mount a massive comeback, and it's going to start with the catcher, Isabella Gerke, number seven. Just trying to pass the baton and not do too much. If you're the Lopes, Gerke 0 for 1 with a walk today. Fouled off. Still out there is Holman Mansell for Baylor. Two innings of work so far. Three Ks, a walk and a hit given up. She's faced eight lopes. This is the ninth lope she will have faced. Let's go all the way through the order for her after this batter. 0-1. Oh, Grounded right back at Holman Mansell. She makes a fine defensive play. And we'll throw over to first for out number one. Lopes down to their final two outs now. The third base pick, number 10, Araceli Pesquero. 
Araceli Pescara struck out against Holman Mansell in her first at bat today. She'll take first strike. In first strike. 0 oh, 2 is the count to Araceli Pesquiera. Strikeout looking for Araceli Pesquiera. Back to back K's on Araceli from Holman Mansell. She's got four strikeouts, and that will be two outs. And the Lopes are down to their final out. And here comes Gianna Nicoletti. She grounded out back in the fifth. She is two for three today with a run scored. A pair of singles for her. Massive shift is on from the Bear defense. And they are two away with a 10-run lead for Baylor. Soft ground ball over to first. Just in time in that. We'll end this one. It is a 12-2 Baylor Bear victory. They stay undefeated in the Lopes Up Classic Tournament. They go a perfect 4-0 on their weekend. They will face Arizona State at Arizona State tomorrow morning before heading back to Waco. The Lopes, they will host the... GCU Invitational next week against Idaho State in Southern Utah as part of their final non-conference tournament. Baylor goes to 14-4 on the season. Their win streak goes to four. The Lopes will fall to 9-13 and 6-12 and and here at the GCU Softball Stadium. And their losing streak goes to four games. All-time Baylor is now a perfect 5-0 and against these Lopes and 2-0 and here in Phoenix. Let's take a look at your final game stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance. 13 to 7 in favor of Baylor in the hit column. Three Lopes errors, one error for the Bears. The Lopes left five on baseball. Baylor left nine. The Lopes hit 280 as a team. Baylor 361. And of course, a 12 to 2. Baylor bear lead in the runs category. And that's where this one finishes for Baylor. And it started with Aaliyah Binford, who had herself. Quite the day. She had a home run to start off the game in the four spot, and she finished three for five with five RBIs, a run scored, a three RBI double, a single, and a home run. So a triple short of the cycle for the starting pitcher for the Bears, Aaliyah Binford. Well, thank you for tuning in to the Lopes Up Classic all weekend long. We hope you'll join us for the GCU Invitational next week when the Lopes will take on Idaho State. And Southern Utah, again, final non-conference tournament action before Utah Valley pays the Lopes a visit to kick off WAC play. Well, don't forget to download the Lope Nation app if you have not done so, so you can watch every home sporting event from your mobile device, or go ahead and just click subscribe on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU for our wonderful GCU TV crew. I am Kyle Borg saying have a great rest of your night, a great rest of your weekend, and as always, Go Lopes!